preparing the live show. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to read the love letters. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up as a kid. Yeah. We never made the streets by the uh -huh. so, yeah, you know, the bottom, she's like, Yeah, you've already done the bottom. She's like, Yeah, I don't want to use Nope. It says, Try it, try it for you. No thanks. No thanks. Okay. Okay, now, now it says planning like the like board meeting to the They don't to do what we done. They realize that. So it's the Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I see. Got a picture? Okay, it's how do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of the big slate house? Yeah. 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 You because after last week, we went out, we put our chairs out. Today, you're inside, you're out. And it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not. 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 I don't know. Oh, he's strong. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. There is any breeze up there. I know. I got a I got a got all the women around the street. Yeah, the little bees. I'm doing all right, Gordon. You got the leaves. I'll get your drill. Yeah, there's a That's hard. Hello, uh, it's Pete Halligan. I just want to let you know I'm online. Thanks, Pete. 
Well, Steve. <laughs> I think somehow there's one on the bed. It's so unhappy. No, he doesn't want to go and stay on the bed. It's a long time. Did you guys get uh, emails from friends? Uh, you didn't either. Let's be just picking up you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, is in the post was beautiful. No, no, I there wasn't. The boathouse wasn't in. Uh, yeah. Well, I looked at right. minutes, and when Tom lined out, especially to piece it was that was one. I right. It was in the minutes. We'll look at it. Yeah. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, I'm Tom Johns, and I'm the. Uh, the zoning board for the village. With us today, we've got hey, Lori, Sue, Mark, and Lynn. I haven't seen Steve. Um, if Steve doesn't show up, Mark, you'll be a voting member. It's been ad hoc today. Um, Kevin, uh, our building inspector, is on the phone with us. And uh, Linda, our secretary, is ready to start typing. So we've got two issues tonight. Both of them have been duly advertised in the paper. And um, letter sent to the neighbors. So the first one is a second attempt. Um, and I'll read this one. This was for Mr. Peter Halligan. And this is at 7594 4th Street. And uh, he would like to deconstruct and reconstruct the front porch on the exact same footprint with a two foot extension to the north. That is 3.9 feet from the north property line where five feet is required and a 14.8 from the front property where 25 feet is required. This would give them a 39% uh, lot coverage where our normal allowance is 30. So this has to do with density control and the site plan review. So Peter, you're there? Yes, yeah, just... um. A couple of quick notes on your description. Okay. Um, the east side of this um, uh, porch is going to be in line with the current foundation. So it's it, it just kind of made it sound like you were saying I was moving it closer to the street. I'm not. Okay. And then the second one is the um, on the north side of it, it's just bringing it in line with the house, the current house, uh, where it is at. Okay. Yep, I agree. There, that's the that's what the drawing looks like to me. Okay, you want to tell us what you're doing, what you've changed from the last application? Um, there were, um, I I did have originally, um, kind of at uh what you'd call the first story line, the uh, first story height. Uh, I had a cantilever of a, of, uh, like a foot and I think it was 16 inches. Um, Greg Switzer had a problem with that. Um, so we removed that. And then on the North side, we originally had, a, a the architect kind of thought a balcony would look nice. Um, that was declined. So we removed that as well. So those were the, the changes that were made to the uh, architectural drawing that Dan Pope did, and it was resubmitted to Kevin. Okay, so just I'll, let me ask you a question. I'm looking at the drawing at this point. The roof line, there's a roof uh, for the front porch that you're going to deconstruct and rebuild, is going to go. It's two stories high. Looks like to me. 
Um, yeah, there, yes, it's uh, on the north side of it. Yeah, there's this. The idea was I, I described this in the last meeting. It was to put a small uh, loft areas to view the lake. All right. Anything else you want to tell us about? Um, I, I unless unless you want me to give you the genesis of it, it was that the foundation is is sinking, and I have my choice is either to try and basically tear the thing off and put a, a new uh, foundation in underneath it and somehow put it back down, which is super expensive or to tear it off and put a new porch on. So that was the genesis of it. The problem is the porch is rotted away and the foundational structure is not intact. Okay. All right, so the way we do this is uh, you basically get to state what you'd like to do. Uh, we then um, open it to public comment. And once we're done with public comment, then we close it to public comment and basically talk amongst ourselves um, about your proposal. So at this point, we'll open it to public comment. If there's anybody, uh, we'll start here live. Anyone in the uh, lobby here, audience want to comment on this one? Okay, I don't see everybody shaking their head, no. Okay, then uh, we'll open it up to Zoom. If there's anyone on the Zoom call that would like to uh, comment on Peter's proposal, now's the time to do it. Okay, I guess I don't see anybody trying to get in, so. Uh, at this point, uh, we'll close at the public comment and discuss it amongst ourselves. Uh, has everybody seen got, got the new drawing? Yeah. Okay. I think he, uh, at this point, Peter's kind of done what we asked him to do last time. Uh, the jut out that, that, that got closer to the, the property on the north is gone. Um, and basically, the front wall is the same on the same. Uh, Dimension or location as an existing porch because it's gone to a second story. And I think we can all even kind of see from those pictures or the pictures that they send me what the new roof, roof line would look like. So I think his, his ask here now really is just that the square up the front porch with the existing house. I see that as the biggest concern. Comments? I don't see anything wrong with what's your question. So, okay. I'm for it. Peter, did the, the neighbor who had a problem round one see your plans and is okay with them? Um, Greg Switzer? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's not an adjacent property, he's across the street diagonal from me. Um, I've reviewed everything with my immediate neighbors and they've They've um, like the um, you know, Altamir's and the uh, Von Holtz uh, or the uh, Campbell's on the south side. Um, they don't have any issue with it. Craig's only issue that he brought up was the cantilever towards the street that's been addressed. He's had a, he's definitely seen the original design as it was before. So nothing else is changing in terms of the look and feel of the thing. So. I removed the cantilever. That was his big issue was it was he didn't feel that we should allow anybody to move more towards the uh, whatever the easements are for the utilities. I don't know what that's called. Okay. We've got no, no comment. Uh, at least I haven't seen one from Greg on this on this uh... And I, have, I have a question, Pete. Um, I just wanted to, you, in both both designs, it shows, a, a, it says a new dormer. Um, can you explain what, how that, what's going to be underneath that dormer? Is, is that just for, why is that there? I guess that's my question. Yeah, that's just a, um, what's going to be underneath that is um, <laughs> nothing other than from the floor of the porch all the way up to the ceiling in that dormer. The idea that Dan 
Pope had was from that little loft area, I, I would have a small view of the small bay out of that dormer window. And that's why he thought that would be a nice addition. And in addition to that, it matches the look of the dormer on my garage. And so it would kind of balance things out. Might give you a little cross ventilation too, huh? Um, if I could open the windows, I don't, I don't envision being able to exactly get up there to oh, open them. Get to them. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> the little loft area, it's only like, um, I, I, you know, I, I'll get the dimension, not perfect, but you know, it's only going to be about, you know, eight feet by, you know, 10 feet or something. It's really just a little viewing place to go and see the lake, especially when it gets crazy outside and it's kind of fun to watch. Anything else, Gordon? No, 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 I'm good. Okay. Someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, vote on his uh, move as uh, presented. The revised plan is presented. Okay. Is somebody want to second that? I'll second. Okay. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Peter. Talk to Kevin. Planning right. board next, Peter, at the following meeting will be your final site plan. Okay. Um, I, can I reach out to you tomorrow, Kevin? Yep, no problem. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, folks. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye now. Okay. The second variance request for tonight's meeting. And this one is from Corey Smith. Corey, you're here? Yep. Okay. Uh, and it's at 8627 Craig Street. Perfect. And Corey would like a 54 inch high fence on the property line for the lot drawing to the edge of the break wall where 10 feet is required. So basically, it's, it's two things it's a, it's a fence over 48 inches and um, Permission to go to the break wall with the fence. We had to read this. Corey, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you want to do? Uh, so we pretty much just summed it up. Okay. Um, we, we are requesting to put up the fence with the same layout as the fence that our neighbors installed at uh, 629 Craig Street. Okay. At this point, um, we're going to open it up to public comment if you're done explaining. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much cool. If uh, anybody, uh, we'll start with the uh, live audience. Anybody like to uh, say something about it? I do. Go ahead. Yeah, it looks like I came to the uh, planning board as well. So I, I heard their concerns. It looks like there's three. A couple of which actually address us in letters, so that's why I wanted to talk to it. Uh, first off was um, our break wall. Our break wall is not raised. Now, I'll tell you, in 2019, I applied and we were turned down. The, the solution is we'll just sandbag the mottos every time, which they did. They came in and they did a really great job of sandbags and the plastic, and there was no problem. I actually checked with Kevin. Kevin, you're on the line. I don't think I had a choice in that. It certainly wouldn't allow it. And it's not just me either. I have a, 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 a boat slip that's cut into the ground. And so the, the east border of that, if it were to have a break wall, that would be on Joelle's property. Um, and she'd have to remove her fence, which by the way, you approved all the way to break wall. So that gets sandbag as well, which is fine. So there's no problem with sandbags and flooding. If there were, if so, suddenly we got some big northeaster and water came over the break wall, it would come over the lowest part first, which would be our boat slip and the section of the break wall that touches the boat slip, which is all the way to the east of our property against Joel Out. That side of our yard is the lowest in elevation and it would go all the way out to the road. So actually the, the road would flood before the, any of the neighbors received any impact, at which point certainly you would come in and sandbag my property. So sandbag and Joel's as well. So sandbags are not the, the problem. 
Uh, one of the other things that was brought up was quick access by first responders. Sue, you've got a, a fence in your whole back, six foot solid wood stockade fence, the whole backyard. It, it appears that the only access is through a shed, front doors and back doors. So, and I'm sure that that is adequate as well as going through your, your house. So as far as someone responding with a gurney for a heart attack, which by the way, I had an incident years ago, they came in our front door, went all the way up our winding stairs and they had no problem getting me out and called someone to thank Holy Cross. Um, so I, I don't think that's an issue as far as getting back there and uh, cutting through a fence. Certainly in any of those show up, they're gonna be able to cut. Um, the other issue, maintenance and repair. Now, they have a valid point with Corey and Lisa putting the fence there. It only leaves them about three feet. I have even less on my side. And you know that I raised our place. There was a fireplace there that was removed. Because of that, there was exposed siding that needed to be replaced. So I went out for a quote on that. And the contractor that showed up said, well, I don't get in here. I don't have a... I don't have a scaffold narrow enough to go in there. I'm going to need to have my fence, but um, my ladder cross over the fence. This is just within the alley, not in the yards. Cross over your neighbor's fence. And I said, well, he's not going to get permission. And I didn't expect them to, right? I don't expect them to. And he said, well, who is it? And I said, Young Radkovich. He said, oh, I know John Radkovich. So he asked, and he was denied, which is fine. And I'm okay with that. So he couldn't do the work because he couldn't get a lift to reach around. I built a scaffold out of wood. I ended up having to do the work myself. I haven't been building houses for 30 years like the neighbor. I'm not a contractor. I got it done. I got it done. And I had to go all the way up to the roof for the, uh, the little peak thing, whatever you call those. So as far as maintenance, the neighbor says, you can't be on our property. Why should you be able to be on Corey and Lisa's? Uh, when our place was lifted, he put in posted signs in the, the backyard near the bay and right out by the road. Again, that's fine. We weren't on the property, but I, I assume they were, didn't want the contractors on the property. But he put a posted signs. So he feels it's very within his limits to limit people from going on his property. And I agree with that. We would never go on their property. If we did, he's got cameras. He would catch us anyway. We don't need to be there. And we knew the boundaries of our property were when we bought it. So did they. And that seems to be their biggest thing because in their letter, they opened up with, it's gonna cause a hindrance for us. That's what they, that was their main thing. It's gonna cause a hindrance for us in our lives. It looks me twice better. They've asked them multiple times not to be on there. Right now, it appears to me that all of their, no, finishing, all their deck furniture is back there. They've got all their little deck things there chimney, I don't know if that ever moved, as well as a big storage thing. It looks like about everything that we would normally see. That's back there right now. How'd they get that? How'd they get that? Did they trespass again, knowing that they don't want them on the property? Or were they able to make it down in their alley? Which it looks like they probably can. Maybe a pain on the butt, but they can. So just for consistency, I just want to make sure you guys address that. Thank you. Anybody else back there? So my name is uh, Terry Vanderwall and I live at uh, 8623 Break Street, which is two houses to the west of uh, Corey. And uh, I have no problem with the fence. I'm going to keep this nice and short. All right. But no problems at all. Duly noted. Thank you. Mr. Kostich, are you uh, just, just, just visiting? Just visiting. All right. Thank you. Um, at this point, then, we'll open it up uh, for comment from anyone who is on the Zoom call. Anybody would like to comment on this uh, request? Now's your chance. Hi, Jan and Rita Rakovitz, 8629 Greg Street. Okay. Good, good evening, chairperson and board members. A letter was emailed April 9th. Did you all receive that? Yes, I just I have it. Okay. 
Is it possible that that gets entered into the minutes? We'd yes. appreciate it if it can. We can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'd like to address Corey's talking points from last week's meeting and we'll be as brief as possible. According to the Smiths, we are here tonight because they misunderstood what they were previously denied. It seemed clear to us that they were denied a fence to the break wall and not over four feet tall. They have a permit to build a four foot fence away from the water. Instead, they began to construct a 54 inch fence. A stop work order was issued and his worker continued to dig holes to the break wall. I actually have um, from Soda's point stop work order that tells you that nothing could be done that has anything to do with the work until the stop work order is released or rescinded. Um, the fence, I'd like to clarify the reason we have a fence installed between our property and the neighbor to the east. It was to control the growth of his bushes and was actually suggested by the mayor. A survey and an underground stake, up, stake out and permit were done before installation. Our neighbor was in agreement at that time with a fence. He had prior a three foot picket fence that was far from the lot line. Our dock extension had nothing to do with a consistent neighborhood look. It was in 2018, it was approved by the DEC and village because of low water at our hoist. In 2020, we repaired and raised the height of the dock, as did Corey, Ellen, and most neighbors, including Terry, because the docks were underwater. It had nothing to do with the look. Our patio furniture for the last 21 years has been stored on our deck. So that's why our patio furniture is out there. We didn't need to bring it from the front yard because it's not stored in the front yard. It's stored in the back. The gas grill has a catch bowl for any grease and it remains on our property. The grass mowing was done as a neighborly gesture for Corey. We stopped mowing when Corey told us to. Now he has another neighbor that's mowing it for him. Driving on his property was never done without permission. In the late summer of 2020, Corey helped take our boat hoist out through between the two properties to the road. In fall of 2020, Corey let me pull a lumber truck to the break wall and drop a load of, of wood to fix and, re and repair our dock. There were no ruts or lawn damage at that time. Spring of 2021, Corey let me pull another lumber truck to the break wall to drop a load to build an upper deck. We also accommodated Corey during the raising of his house. Soil was uh, was put up against our siding. Slats on our deck were broken by his contractors, not Corey. And we supplied the electric. It was all repaired by us and we never complained. Um, it's also been brought up about the high water sandbags that are necessary because Sean to the east of us did not raise his break wall and the village already discussed the need for sandbags if this becomes an issue again, and they'd have to sandbag our strip between Sean's house and our house. Um, the upper deck compliance. He's brought up the fact that he does not think we're compliant with building the upper deck. We were in compliant with the upper deck. Um, all, there's the compliance letter. The deck permit was issued by Kevin and all inspections were done. Our certificate of compliance was issued by Kevin. Let's see, just to reiterate, the reason that we have concerns about that fence is because of not being able to access the, the backyard in case of an emergency for emergency equipment or gurneys. Corey suggested that we take it through the front door. We have an older home and the doors are not three foot wide. And that's what you need is a minimum of three feet to get a gurney in the house. Um, key, uh, quick response is a key. 
whenever there's an emergency. And land lacking us does impede normal maintenance. And those are our issues. Um, if you have any questions, be glad to answer them for you. Okay, well, thank you for your input. We'll move on. Thank you. Uh, if uh, anybody else is on the Zoom call that would like to comment on this proposal. I don't hear anybody. Just uh, I'll uh, make sure that this gets mentioned, but I have got three or four letters. Um, the Karasinskis uh, were in favor of it. Uh, Rachel Swartz was in favor of it. Carl and Christine Withers were in favor of it. Uh, Van and Walls, who are here, had no concerns. Um, the Rakoviches were against it. And William McGee from Sarnia, Ontario, doesn't care. I don't know how he got <laughs> how he got a letter, but he sent me a note and said he doesn't care. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, at this point, if there's no more public comment, we'll shut that down and discuss it amongst ourselves. Do we um, do we get a chance to rebuttal against some of the stuff that she you said? can? Yeah, we'll see if there's any more comments, and then we'll let you talk one more time. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole tip for tat. I don't think there's anyone else going to talk. So go ahead. <laughs> I just I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to state this. You know we have a long history with that neighborhood, and we're not here to listen to neighborhood squad. Right. And I, you know right. we're here we're here to talk about what's in the, the book, uh, what what variants you want from the book, and why you can't live with a four foot fence in this case, or why you can't live with a fence that's ten foot off the brick wall. Whatever happens in that neighborhood makes no difference to us. Right. So. Go ahead. I understand. Um, in regards to the gurney size, the structure size, uh, we actually talked to them and it said that the structure is 24 inches wide. So there's no reason that they can't get a gurney back through there. Mm -hmm. On the road side of the property, there are 33 inches from where the fence is right now to their home. On the water side of their home, there is 42 inches between the fence and their house. So there's Ample room for them to get back there and access it. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, in between the fence and their house. Yeah, it goes from 33 to 44 inches. The fence, the height of the fence, uh, that's for multiple different reasons. Um, for dogs, the record which has had concerns about dogs. Why is the fence higher than that four feet? Because of dogs. Our son's dog actually jumps crazy. The dog. Very well behaved dog, but he can jump and jump over my shoulder one time. Very good dog. Very good. Um, we want to maintain consistency in the neighborhood. Don't want to go completely different, even though we painted it a beautiful color. Um, but uh, we also have liability concerns, and we believe that we just should be treated fairly. Their fence is 54 inches tall, their fence goes to the break wall. The neighbor's fence. Joelle, her fence goes to the break wall. She had it for six months before we last did it. Yeah. And, and can you say that, say that again? She was approved in April 21, six months before we were we at The main reason for the fences, the way I understand it, is in case sandbagging is needed. There's no way. Anything's going to happen. Nothing that, there, that sandbags will ever be needed there. Ever. All of our elevations of our brick walls are almost a half a foot to a foot higher than a day. Okay. It's not going to happen. Not for us. Mm -hmm. The area might flood, but the water's not going to flood coming over our brick walls. It's just not. Their fence that they have at 54 inches tall doesn't end at the break wall. It goes over top of the break wall and down the sea wall. In fact, one of their fence posts is in the water, is touching the water today. 
We just want what they have, what you guys have approved before in the past. Okay. If that's it, we'll uh, close it for public comment at this point and discuss it amongst ourselves. We do have, this did go to uh, planning and- um, can, can we make one more comment? Go ahead, one more. Yeah. As far as the sandbagging goes, I think you could ask Kevin. Sean didn't raise his break wall and it's gonna impede the whole point when the water goes over. Kevin said that the town was going to sandbag around the house to control the water so it didn't go in. Kevin, can you comment on that? What do you want me to answer for that? Well, I just want you to answer the conversations that we had that we would be, the town would sandbag. And we have to sandbag along, along would be line. sandbagging along the fence line to maintain the water would not come into my property. We so, had so it'd be the conversation has changed though now because we have so few properties that have to be sandbagged. The mayor's pushed it off to a civil matter. It's now we drop the sandbags off and it's the private property owner's job to handle it now. We aren't handling it any further because we have so few properties that we have to handle. We aren't taking care of it. So we would drop the sandbags off for you guys, but then it's your responsibility to take care of it. If there's jeopardy, like if the public is in jeopardy, we would just sandbag in front of the properties and wall it off. If that helps you answer the question. I understand that, but we would still have to place the sandbags and we'd have to get them from the front, the roadside to the back. And that was one of the things we said. And that was one of our concerns because it could happen again. In the refrigerator between the fence and your house. You could fit a sandbag between the fence and your house. Okay. 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 All right. We're just All right. I would ask that the zoning board please look at the town's emergency sandbagging and what they're going to do with sandbags and whether it can place in the event of high water. Because one of the things that they're doing, in fact, they, it says it. I mean, there, there's a plan out there, there's a picture of it, shows you everything. Um, Kevin has it. Kevin, do you can you pull up that picture? the sandbagging i can yeah hold on our emergency plan yep um i don't if anyone's watching on youtube if this if this disconnects youtube um I, i'm hoping it'll tell us i'm gonna take the host from you for a second tom okay i don't know if this is gonna stop youtube or not No, it didn't. Okay, perfect. All right, hold on. If the concern was valid, we would. I feel like you guys went to approve the two fences alongside both sides of um, Sean's fence, where the break wall is lower. You guys approved both fences. To go all the way to the water. But that was, those fences were approved before 121 was made public. No. One, 121 was a, was approved by the state in Feb, on Feb, in February, on February 20, 2017. Yeah. Um, there, Radkovich's fence was approved 2000, uh, was approved February 27, 2017. March 28, by the zoning board, 2017. Um, over a month later. Sorry, where you wrong. And um, Joelle's was approved April 26, 2021. The reason that we gave permission to Joelle was because she had has small children and there was a danger at the at the right where Sean's boathouse is. And she asked to run that all the way to the edge so that her children would get caught in that. Well, why are you guys worried about the sandbagging there? That's his concern. His concern is invalid. You guys allow both. Well, the sandbag, the sandbagging right. is just kind of a, an adjacent issue here. So this is just to give some clarity. This was from 2020 when we sandbagged during uh, COVID. We we've changed stuff. So like, for example, this whole area down here on uh, Gardner is protected. Uh, Lowson's property, which needed 69 pallets is protected. Um, what you're looking for specifically is here. 
where it says 36. I don't know if I might be able to zoom in. Yeah, I can zoom in. I believe it's right here. Is this the right one? Yep, right here. So this is the corner in question. It's a little off, obviously, but we put 36 pallets. They would be put here, and uh, it would be up to the private at this point because we have so few properties um, down the run. It's been updated, so there's even fewer now. I think there's six properties. This is us. This is where the fence would go. This is Rakovic. This is Sean. And it, it, it's all the way over here where the sandbags will be placed. We're way over here. Way over here. We're, it's not here. We're over here. And this is going to happen before the water reaches a level that we're going to flood. The town's already, the village is already prepared for it. Okay, the rest of it is yard. That's higher. Let's get back to the variance issue. We, we've all learned enough about sandbag um, I This did, we'll, we'll close it to public comment at this point. We can get as uh, much as we've got. Um, this did go before planning. Um, and I'll just uh, read briefly what uh, they said. Uh, they had, uh, they were the ones who had approved the four foot fence. Um, and at that point, uh, we weren't involved, so we couldn't go all the way to the break wall, because that would have been a variance. Um, they talked about the platform. Um, But they basically, they had approved the four foot fence uh, and then a four and a half foot um, near the break wall, some sort of a removable section for emergency access. And basically they all voted for that. Um, emergency access from the water. In no, the water is from property to property. Oh. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's, and then they sent it to us because you wanted a higher fence and a, uh, and all the way to the break wall. Okay, what's, uh, what do you think about this request? I'm confused how much room there is between the houses. Kevin, did you pull up the pictures that I sent you about how, how much room's in between the houses for the fences now? I've got, I've got pictures here. I have pictures of here. Right here. That's something you sent me, Corey? Yeah, I just sent it to you today. Okay. Hold on. How close to the... <laughs> That's from 34 inches to 44. You want me to show you? Yeah. Uh, um, so, so we're going to put you that are caution tickets, obviously. Here? Uh, yep. Okay. And from this point here, there's, uh, what was it, 42 on? Huh? Corey, is it, just, is it a photo? Is it a survey map? What is it just a photo? Yeah, yeah. there were photos. photos. I, I, have, I have a plan. I have a plan on the rack of And then up here at this point, this is a most narrow point, and mm -hmm. there's 34 inches here. 34 of here. Corey, I don't know if this is what you're wanting me to show. Are you wanting me to show them this? Right, no, right there. Yep, right there. So what you're looking at right there, the most narrow point okay. would be, this is from the road, and it's 34 inches from the fence at that corner of the house right there. And then if you follow the line, the string line all the way down, it goes to at this corner here, it goes to 44. Goes to 44. Right, I, the plan I have is the rapid plan, and, and it's close to what you said, Corey. The front of it is 2.8 feet, which is 32 inches. And the back of it is three, three feet, four inches. So that's 40 inches. Yes. I don't think it's 2.8. Well, the 0.8 out of 10. We broke this out of survey. The, the yeah, actually, front, when you, if you want to convert the surveyor's numbers to inches, you multiply 0.88 times 12. That's how you do it. The next, now the next one. Kevin, do you have the pictures with the ruler or the tape measure? And the east side is 1.7 feet. 
tape measure? Oh, uh, that was from his shed, but he moved that. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? What's the picture called? It was in the, the Google links that I sent you today. Yeah, yeah. What is what's it called? Um, just so I can pull it open. Do you know? Um, something with notes. Whichever ones are say notes are the ones that are and it annotated or whatever. Okay, hold on. Uh, I've got, all right, I'm just going to pull up. Hold on. So which one are you looking for? Any one with a tape measure. One with a tape measure, okay. Yeah. You didn't say North Fence on one of them? Yeah, she said North Fence. Should start with that. Yeah. Yep. And then the other one said is Red Sack. And Corey had provided us with a flat too on his on his application. So there's the there's a picture right there on oh, the yeah. string line, which is actually downward. Cable, um, but anyways, you can see right there that it's 42 inches. That's right where the fence would go. Right yeah, right where this it's sitting on the yellow, middle yellow string. Ample room. So there's plenty of room. Um, and then your other issue is you just don't like the 10 foot uh, removal. Right, correct. Yeah. No, we just want to go all the way to the break wall like everybody else is doing. Like everybody else is but doing. People what, do it for. Just because everybody else is doing it? That's no, 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 there's other reasons too, like to keep our dogs off their property. Then why don't you have a why are you requesting a fence on the other side of your house? If you are worried about the dog going the right dog was their concern. The dog their No, the dog's con the concern with the dog was Sean brought that up in 2016 when he wanted to build a six-foot fence there was never anything about dogs that rabbitches had written i said show me the minutes i guess there was the rest of was right the concern in the minutes that they were concerned about don's dog sean's dogs or his guest's dogs yeah, coming out of the about the neighbor's large dogs that's why their application went from four feet to 54 inches now the yeah, reason, that's the the reason that thing. We gave them him permission to put that fence up because because Sean's Arbor Viety, I I I was there. I it, know it does say Amorora. They had concern about the shrubs overtaking the property. Exactly. Then it says they also had concern about the neighbor's large dogs. Also. Well, as I remember, in the minutes in in the discussion. The neighbors came forward and said that they had never seen any dogs on Sean's property. And that's why Sean had asked for a six foot privacy fence that that we denied. Now he put up he put up the art providing all the way down to the edge of the yes. um, down to the thing. And that's why the only thing that we tried to do was to allow John to put up the fence so that he could trim it as it came over onto his property. I, it's this paragraph right here. It literally states that they are concerned with dog, with Sean's dogs. Right in the minutes. Right in the minutes. Right in the minutes. And as far as our neighbor to the other side, Ellen, that's irrelevant. We're just talking about John's right now. Ellen's not worried about that dogs. She has a dog. Okay, I thank you for sending me a piece. You can keep it. I have more. Okay. <laughs> She's very well prepared. But I'm not. But I'm not. You're unmuted. Yeah, I guess we have two concerns. One, the height of the fence, and two, do we want to let it go back to the, to the great wall? Two, what do, what do you think? Planning said that it could be. 54 inches from the front corner to the south corner of the house to the break wall to the 10 foot removable section, right? And then it needed to be four feet going toward the road. 
Yeah, that sounds right. That makes sense to me, other than the fact that it's removable. Is there anything that you? No, nope. and, and, and we'll take that. Honestly, we'll take that. My only question to that is to get onto their deck. There's a three foot opening to walk from our property onto their deck. Kevin, you have that picture as well. Which, what's the name of it? Oh, it would have been the very last email I sent him. Last week, what this week? Oh, you could, yeah, you can actually you, you could see it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or that one, yeah. So, the opening to get onto their deck was only three feet wide. If they need a 10 foot opening to get onto their deck, why isn't their deck 10 feet wide? Are you talking about this one, Corey? No, nope. all right, but you, you can kind of see it, but you're right, right? So, right here, yeah. That's only three feet wide. Why do I have to go 10 feet if he, the guy that's concerned? So you asked about the 10 foot temporary section. 10 foot right. setback. Right. Do they make? They didn't do anything. Temporary sections. Well, these are called gates. They're all, they're all six foot <laughs> <pads. Really? laughs> It's spectacle. Yeah. It, over my head. Um, do they make gates that are small? Yes, they do. They have. Yes, they absolutely do. Well, why do we have ten foot requirement to begin with? It's be, to be able to access. I know that you don't think that we're going to have high water and it will never happen again, and that we'll never have to sandbag again. But and and I'm not saying that we will, <laughs> but um, I do think that. I, and I was told, like Kevin said, because I asked Kevin, I said, if something happens, Kevin said there were five properties that are not. That, that didn't raise their, their break walls. And, and Sean is one of them that didn't raise his break wall. And he told us why he didn't think it was prudent for him to do so tonight. But in doing that, then that means that, I mean, I know that it goes into the lowest part, but let me tell you, when it, when it came into my house and underneath my house, it started in the lowest part and it came to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't buy that it's not going to go over into Rakovich's. So, and maybe it never will. And, may, and we can say that we hope it never does for anybody. But I think that the fact that we need access in the case of an emergency to allow that, because if they, even if they had it, they wouldn't be able to access anything from that side because that side is even tighter than your side. Okay. So we're, hang on a second, please. So where exactly, and not that what you're saying is an invalid disorder, I 100% agree with you, 100%. But well, where is it exactly that you're talking about them placing the sand On Sean's side. On Sean's break wall? Well, he would have to do it on his break wall, but they would run it down the side of their, their the uh, east side of their of their fence. They would have to run, they would have to run it on their property on that side of their fence. But they also chose to put a fence up. If there's an emergency, they can take the fence down. And that doesn't affect it, our property. But it doesn't, it how doesn't would they get how would they get in? Not it's not our problem. They're not is he, not is the attorney or Mr. Martin, are you here? It's not our problem. It's not it's not it's, it's not, not for us. Okay, if the state of emergency is declared. Then you guys can go wherever you want. That's right. That's right. That's right. You, you can Absolutely. cut any fence you need. Yeah. Um, I, I am I'm here. Just yeah, I, just want, I just want to understand. Mr. Martin. I'm here. Did you have a specific question for me? Yes. Is it our responsibility to worry about the neighbors on the other side of their house, sand, getting the sandbags over there? Is that, does that responsibility fall on to us? Two houses down. Do we have to allow the neighbors? access to our property so they can sandbag their property well I, I the question really isn't if it if it's your responsibility it's whether or not the plane uh the the board should be taking into consideration on the application but they have the you know the section of the code and the factors before them to make the determination something we haven't talked about yet are we have five factors that we have to 
that we have to weigh in our decision. This is not whether or not it's, it, it's an opinion or whether people should have the right to put their fences up. Although I'm, I'm sure the, the work you did was incredible, Lisa, and, try, and, and showing us where those fences were. But how many of, many of those fences were implemented and installed before the law changed and there were some that we gave permission for, and for very specific reasons, at least since I've been on the board. But the thing that, that I question so much is, why did you let the two adjacent properties to the one property that does need to be sandbagged totally take their fences to the brick wall? I mean, right here it states in Joelle's, in her minutes, it states the 10 foot setback was for sandbagging purposes. This property can be sandbagged on the top of his brick wall, meaning Sean's. That's motion to approve. Everyone approved. It's yeah. adjacent to that property. So is Rakovich's. Why is that our concern? Two houses down, but the ones adjacent aren't? It's not fair. Well, not when, fair. We, when we did these, when we did, there was different reading. With the Joel, there was kids involved. Safety for kids. In, in the other case, um, we were we were trying to avoid a six foot high wooden fence or a living edge, which is classified as a fence. So in that case, that was a compromise to a, from a six foot wooden fence. So, like we say, there's reasons that we've done this. It wasn't done carte blanche. In both cases, there were what we thought substantive reasons to grant variance. So um, I think you know we're getting lost a little bit here. That if if we've got a movable section ten foot off the break wall, um, with the idea that it can be accessed if, if it needs to be for emergencies or sandbags, that's a different deal to me than a permanent fence. Uh, and how we let one get down with fence posts in the water, I don't understand that one. But I haven't looked at that either. Can we make it six foot? That way, I don't occur any additional costs because they come in six, six foot sections. Yep. Let me see, talk about that. Okay, you two sit down. Let us talk about this okay. for a few minutes and we'll, okay. we'll come up with a decision. Thank you for your time. Okay. Lynn, what do you, what do you, demise? Well, I'm liking the idea that six foot is movable. And I don't see any reason not to uh, accept the fence. It's 54 inches? Yeah. Even with now the, the road side on the rack, which is side, is not 54 inches. Okay, we step down to four foot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and that's for the first, first section. Yeah, on the, to, before you get to the house, yeah. right. we have on the house. south side to the house. You're up with one more. Any thoughts? What are we calling you? A gate? Um, um, <laughs> very tech. I don't buy a gate or just a movable site. Six foot. Can't be welded in, you know. Right. It would be there all the time, except in the case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. It could be, it wouldn't have a padlock on it. No, anything, absolutely right? not. So in the case of an emergency, anyone could take that out. Except the dog. <laughs> I think that would work. Do it. Very neat accomplishes. Very neat accomplish. Yeah, it is so that he doesn't have to cut off part of the fence. Yeah. I mean, is a true state of emergency? They'll tear the fence. Yeah, yeah. Tear. yeah. Tear. yeah. 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 Okay, uh, can I have a motion to accept the variance as submitted? With the removal? No, no, no. no. Oh, All right, right, I'm sorry. Can I do the first? Yeah. So moved. Okay. Second. 
Amen. Okay. Everybody in favor of the variance as proposed, vote aye. Vote no if you're against it. No. no. Okay. So that fails. Now, would someone like to propose a compromise? I I move that we um, uh, recommend approval to um, have a four foot fence to the south of the house to the um, and I'm not sure where it's where it stops to the road. I'm sorry, four foot fence, a yeah, four, yeah, four yeah. foot fence from the south corner, as north of uh, southwest corner of the house to the to where it would stop at the road, and then from the the southwest corner north, 54 inches. Until you get six feet from uh, and two, and then a removable portion at the end of a break wall that's six feet in length. A removable portion at the end that's what? At six the feet north feet. end, nearest the from, from the, the break wall, from the break six wall. foot back, six foot to the south. I second that motion. Okay, let's make sure Linda's with us in this. And that would be six feet long. Long. Six, six, feet, long. six feet long, 54 inches. 54 high. Okay. So, did we add something that it's not a lock, or do we assume that? I think it's fine. Well, we can say if we need it, don't take it down. Hey, Linda, want to read that yeah. to us? Uh, okay, Larry recommended a four foot fence from the southwest corner of the house to the road. From the southwest corner north, have it be 54 inches with a removable portion from the great wall to the south, would be six feet long and 54 inches high. Can you just, uh, I think it's southeast corner. Because otherwise you're going off of, are you guys going off of Rakovich's house or Corey's house? Corey's house. So southeast corner. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And how far to the road? I mean, I, I'm looking at the picture of the fence. How far off the road, Kevin, do we, is it allowed? We don't have fence setbacks unless there's corner clearance. We don't have anything. Um, sight line is different. I mean, we have different things that we've always done with Brad to make sure there's no sight line issues. Um, I know that uh, in the past we've had the the planning board or zoning board members can go down and take a look. This is obviously a see-through fence, um, like with Elijah Wilton's fence. They went down and took a look to make sure that that wasn't going to impede any pulling out. Okay. Well, with the with the um, metal fence, when, but. It shouldn't come any further out than the Rakovich fence. Right. So the Rakovich it should be on the same plane as the Rakovich right. fence. So the setback from the edge of the road would be equal to the, equal to the Rakovich. Rakovich fence to the west. East. East. East, <laughs> East west. Okay. Okay, Lynn has uh, seconded that proposal. Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passed unanimously, Corey. That's it, Jim. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you to everybody that supported us with this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's it for new business. Uh, we have minutes. From the last meeting, yes, and it's, I think it's 3 13. And I did send them around everyone. Yeah, so I, I looked at them in front of me. Any objections to all of it? Okay, can I, can I propose to accept those minutes as written? So moved. Okay. I'll second. Anybody in favor? Aye. Aye. Everybody in the wind, what you hear? Um, 
Kevin, do we have any new business? New business. Um, You're going to get the tide sides uh, gas stock. What's the the boathouse? Yes. No. Um, you guys already approved the use. So I asked I asked the attorney about that. Um, you guys already approved that. So there's no other zoning reviews that he'd be going through. Planning had to review the size because it was an amendment to the final site plan. So they, I don't know if anyone watched that meeting. Um, they reduced him down in square footage and they reduced him to the existing building height is what they did. They didn't give him the uh, 20, I think he was asking for 23 feet and uh, the building height was 12. So they reduced him down to the 12 foot that he was allowed. Okay. Did Kevin, when we approved the special use permit, did, were, were there bathrooms in that building? No. I mean, no. Then how can he add bathrooms to the building now? Mm, I don't know that that makes it. Why would that make a difference to you guys? Well, aren't there? I mean, aren't there? More Is your special the use? Well, no, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, this is a permanent building. This is a permanent building on a permanent dock. The last, the dock before was a floating dock, and um, and now you're so. So, aren't there different building requirements on a permanent structure out in the water for sewage and all that stuff? I mean, is isn't there a different? I mean, aren't there more stringent rules? You know, I, I just don't understand how how that could change when we didn't we didn't approve bathrooms in the in the. We probably the, did approve him. Uh, yeah, we approved the pump out. Yeah, yeah. You guys gave him permission for a superstructure on a permanent, uh, permanent structure. That's what you guys gave him approval for. Boathouse or superstructure, and let the planning board go ahead with their final site plan approval. So then they went ahead with their site plan approval. Their site plan approval was assuming that it was an 11 by 11. So when he came back to change the size, he changed the size so that he'd add a, a restroom for his employees. And then the restroom, I believe he's got to go through. We sent him to the health department, and I believe he's got another step. He's got to go through with the DEC for his marina permit and that. Um, but the requirements are, I mean, they're very strict. I mean, he's got to get stamped plans. He's got to go through everything like normal. Him and the, We just need a footprint so that his architect could get started on the stamped plans. Yeah, and I got a question today about um, the weight of the building and whether uh, that was part of the costage plan or not, whether that was taken into consideration. The weight of the building? Yeah. The of the building? yeah. Like the weight on the permanent structure? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that'll be something his engineer figures out when he does the stamp plans. That'll be up to his engineer to calculate, not not for me. Okay. That's He's, not something costed. I got, a, I got a question on whether that was um, taken into consideration uh, in the state plans. Oh, like when we do the engine, like for spans and things, for for figuring out like lumber, nominal lumber, because it's a concrete pour. Uh, I mean, yes. over steel. So it doesn't end up in a bay in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something his engineer calculates based on the size, the spec of everything. That's what his engineer is going through and doing. That's not something Costage did. Costage was just uh, on board for the seeker review. Right. Anything else? Uh, when's our next meeting? What's uh, the signs? Signs. Our signs. Oh. Your, so your next meeting is the 8th, and hopefully by the 8th, you'll have signs. Okay. Great. Any other questions for Kevin? Any old business we need to talk about? I was missing a few things. Uh, at the uh, RV park, there's going to be a clubhouse. And what's the other house going to be? Well, one's going to be a clubhouse. One's going to be a maintenance and office. Okay. 
tore down the uh, old barn at oh, we did. House on we did. North oh, Ontario did. yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. He's a busy guy. Anything else anybody got before we dismiss? Okay, you have a motion to dismiss? I move. All right, second. Yeah. second. Thank you, it's unanimous. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Kevin. All right, TJ, you have host again. Uh, just end the meeting down below. It says leave. Uh, yeah. No, it should say end. Should say end, and it should 